Good afternoon. Thanks for stopping by the ProSoft booth. Right, so for the next five or ten minutes, we're just going to talk about uh, solutions that, that ProSoft offers for the energy and power industry. Right? Um, so, uh, is anyone, everyone familiar with ProSoft? Yeah, so essentially, you, you, you probably know we make uh, interface modules for networks that aren't part of the core Rockwell network. So anything outside of device net, outside of internet IP, we, we would make interfaces for that, right? Um, and, and historically, some of these networks have been popular in specific industries. So for the power and energy um, um, uh, industries, we found that DNP has been really, really popular. Uh, a bunch of IEC protocols are really popular as well. Um, and lately, we've uh, we started to see the emergence of a new protocol called IEC 61850, right? So just for today's talk, we're just going to zoom in specifically on DNP3 and IEC 61850 and a bit of the, the strengths and weaknesses of all of them, you know? So uh, like I said, this is going to be a really brief uh, presentation, so we'll just touch the surface. But of course, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to, to field them. Okay, so for DNP, we've uh, recently released a new uh, client and server module. So here we have a typical DNP3 network. We have a bunch of intelligent electrical devices down here. So it could be uh, uh, relays, it could be power meters, and all that sort of thing. So we have a, a client module that acts essentially as a master to pull all of these uh, devices. Right? Now the, the, the special thing about this module is that it's not only a client, it can also act as a server. Right, so if you've got a higher level system like a DCS or some sort, that can act as a client uh, to the ProSoft module, uh, which acts as a server, which in turn acts as a client to all the devices. So essentially what happens is that you've got your ProSoft module here working as a data concentrator. Instead of having your, your main DCS hold all these devices individually, you just need to talk to one. Right? Um, and that's really, really useful when you start talking about low speed, um, networks. So for example, let's say you've got a wireless system over a plant or over, whoops, sorry, over a, um, see a fairly long distance, let's say, you know, one or two miles, five miles, that sort of distance. Your, your wireless link then becomes your bottleneck. Right? So you don't want your DCS system to be pulling your devices individually. You want to talk to just one main RTU. So our module can help you do that. Things get even slower when you're talking worldwide communications. Right, so if you have a system in the US talking to a system in China, uh, we, I mean, you can do that. It is available over, over 3G. Um, but then you're, you're getting a really, really slow, high latency network here. So it's really important to have data concentrated uh, rather than uh, decentralized. Okay. So, so ProSoft not only does the DNP, we also do all these wireless solutions as well. So we can do um, interstate communications, we can um, help with power distribution systems, provide RTUs, all that sort of thing. Right, so now we're gonna get into a little bit of detail about why DNP3 is so popular in the electrical industry, right? Uh, so you've probably heard about a simple network like Modbus. Okay, that's probably the most popular third-party network out there. So Modbus is a traditional poll response network. So you have a master that polls slaves, and when the slaves get polled, they reply with live data. Simple as that. The problem here is that Modbus devices typically only provide real-time data. They don't, they don't provide historical data. And the, other, the next problem is that devices that are not being polled don't have the chance to talk. They always have to wait. So if you have a, an, an electrical incident of some sort, maybe a, a trip or an overload, right? you, you want to know right away. And what bus doesn't allow you to do that? So that's, you know, slaves only respond when pulled. So that's, you know, that's, that's one of the key weaknesses of Modbus. The NP3 network, on the other hand, um, tries to address these uh, um, weaknesses by providing native support for event data. So your IEDs out in the field are actually able to keep a database of events as they happen and report them with timestamps so you know exactly when a, a, a certain overload relay tripped. Okay, you, you know when a certain device went over voltage, that sort of thing. And they also have built-in support for unsolicited reporting. So if anything happens based on your, your predefined parameters, the slaves will actually just report to the master. They will talk out of turn. So that's the NP3 over with, um, that's the advantages of the NP3 over Modbus. Now, obviously it's still not the perfect uh, uh, protocol yet, and, and here's one example of why the NP3 still has some room for improvement. So let's have a look at 
mod bus, you know, typical mod bus registers. Okay. Data is all stored in registers, and without a table like this, without the user manual, there's no way you can tell what 40427 stands for. Okay. And the same thing with DNP3. They would uh, define objects and variations and indexes that would all represent something. But again, without this table, without the user manual, there's just no way you can figure out what, what everything means. So here's where IEC 61850 tries to improve. Right? So you don't have self-descriptive tags. So IEC 61850 uses a self-descriptive tag like this. Now, it's, it doesn't look very descriptive, but if you're used to the protocol, you will know that XCBR uh, re refers to a circuit breaker. Health and STVAL re refers to the, the health of the circuit breaker. So and any device that complies to IEC 61850 would use the same data model. Right? And compare that against the NP3 and Modbus, there's no way you can figure out what, what contents there are. Okay? So that also allows users to have a bit more brand independence. Right? So if you use different brands of overload relays, it would all represent their health as XCBR health as the valve. So that, that allows you to be a bit more flexible with your vendor selections and your device selections. So what ProSoft has done, um, we have created a gateway that converts IEC 61850 to native Rockwell Ethernet IP. Right? Now Ethernet IP doesn't have these same um, tag naming rules, but we've created a way to automatically generate these tags. Okay, so even from the ladder logic, you would access the health um, using a, a tag name called Relay Name Health STVAL. So it makes things really, really straightforward okay, for, the, for the programmer. And so, so that, in a nutshell, is the advantage of IEC 61850 over the NP3. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to finish up with a bit of a, bit of, uh, a corporate overview of, of you know, all uh, the energy customers of uh, ProSoft. We literally have just about in every major utility, every major power plant um, all over the world um, using ProSoft modules. And uh, we cover a whole wide range of different applications. We have wireless for stacker reclaimer systems, for crane systems, uh, we, we handle all sorts of uh, power generation. Uh, the largest uh, hydro power plant in the world is in China, that's, that's also a ProSoft customer, the Three Gorges Dam, I'm sure you've heard of that. Right, uh, we do nuclear power, substation automation, um, even solar. So solar is a big, big customer of ours. Um, and uh, because of our wireless capabilities over 3G and over Wi-Fi, we can even provide remote access. So that allows you to monitor and program your plants from anywhere in the world. Okay. So that's a quick 5-10 minute overview of what we can do for you in energy. Any questions?